Okay, it's your boy Big Dog here again. Another video. This is a Samsung UN series LED, 60 inch LED. And basically, um, same problem. <laughs> Sound, no picture. Pretty much no backlight. As you can see, once that little red light stops flashing, the picture should come up, the backlight should come on. And as you can see, uh, it does not. Um, if I put my flashlight up to it, as you can see, I can say where it says, uh, I believe it says no signal or something like that. And I hit toggle it again, you can see it changing. So with that being said, that means that uh, absolutely we have a backlight problem. <coughs> I'll verify the model number on this TV. UN60J620D AFXEA. So we're going to proceed the uh, disassembly process. The first thing, of course, is the stand. Uh, I also did another video on pretty much the same TV about the. Uh, this one has backlight, but no, but no video and no on-screen display. I'll put a link to that video um, in the end of uh, this one. Pretty much same TV, same disassembly process, but we're going to take this one down a step further and disassemble this all the way down to the panel and uh, LEDs. Okay, uh, these are four screws right up under the stand. Make sure that you take those out and definitely make sure that you put those back in We are when you are reassembling the TV uh, because once you put the stand in and, he, and if, if you don't have those screws in, uh, the TV is going to look like it's dipped over. Uh, that's because that is the support bracket under there for the stand. So we're gonna remove the outer. This has two covers. This has, this has a outer cover and an inner cover. We'll take the screws out of the outer cover first. Okay. <coughs> Use a little prior tool or something flat and just lift up the bottom part of the outer cover and it'll slide right towards you. I'm sorry, the inner cover. Okay, we'll go right to our LED connector located on our power supply board. As you can see, um, those wires are going directly into the TV for the backlight strips. Okay, we're going to zoom in and uh, there's like two, four wires. There's a, a net LED plus, LED minus, for each line, there's two lines. This also has a legend on it, um, right next to it. D plus, D minus, or whatever that says. But just remember the black wires are always negative. That's your LED minus. And the plus side is the uh, blue wires. Okay, so I just get the uh, wire disconnected from the power supply board, and I'm just gonna check it with my LED checker and see which line is bad just to make sure that it, that it is an LED uh, you know, backlight problem. All right, we'll go to our first line there and... As you can see, it's 114 volts. I can see the backlights light up through the back of the TV. We'll check our second line here. And as you can see, nada. That line is absolutely open, which means it has an open LED on it or slash LEDs. I'll just recheck it to show you. Negative on the black wire, positive on the blue wire. That line is good. And our second line, open. Absolutely nothing, nada. Okay, so let's proceed and take this bad baby apart. Okay, so we've got our inner cover off and now we'll just remove the outer cover. I always unplug those plugs, at least that one on the left there, that's the plug for the toggle switch and uh, some, the Wi-Fi module. And sometimes the Wi-Fi modules Depends on which model TV this is. It's located on that uh, outer back cover. 
but this one is actually located inside of the TV so I really didn't have to pull that um, that's our speakers I'll just pull that for safety purposes just a habit I do and I always disconnect on this TV especially the power going to the TCOM board from the main board uh, so that way I won't short anything out when I go to uh, test the LEDs before I put it back together and make sure that those uh, TCON connectors are not touching the metal uh, so I don't, I don't have to worry about that right now because I got it disconnected and I'm just going to tape it to the chassis there's absolutely no bolts coming out of those pins so we're all good Okay, just showing you where those screws are on the very bottom. Almost like up underneath the TV there, but uh, just remove all the screws on the outer back cover. Pretty much self explanatory, right? Okay, got my screws taken out, and that should come right up. It's absolutely nothing tied to the back cover, so that is good. Okay, I'm definitely going to do this first. Um, disconnect the driver panels from the TCOM board um, just connect the connector and I'm just showing you that there's uh, absolutely no bolts just coming through there because we did disconnect our line from our main board and there's our toggle switch so we'll just take that off um, it only goes in one way. As you can see, there is a little groove on the bottom of the uh, cover there, so you can just, you know, see where it goes exactly. Slides and locks right in there, right in place. Okay. I'll just go ahead and plug that back in. Okay, that's our Wi-Fi module, and the reason I'm pointing that out is if you ever have any internet problems as far as like it won't accept your password or you, it doesn't detect any internet signal when you know there is one, I'll just go ahead and place that little module in the bottom part that was right on there. Okay, and uh, basically what we're going to do is um, I'm just showing you where to uh, use your prior and take off that outer bezel. There's no screws in it, just pry it up. Uh, of course, you'll have to flip the TV down. I am going to uh, disconnect the speakers, I guess I did, <laughs> a little what's going on there, oh, okay, uh, yeah, I guess I did, because you know, because like I said, you're going to put the TV, on, lay it on its back and to uh, get a, that outer bezel off to pry it up, so you don't want those speakers like falling off and getting all in the way and touching something that, that it shouldn't be, so I'll just go ahead and remove those. I'll flip it down. That way I can get up underneath there and unpry the outer bezel. I feel like I'm about to work on a car. <laughs> and I, I, really, I really do kind of hate this part only because I'm a little, I can't bend down like I used to, but I can manage though. So we're just gonna take a little prior to it and, un and unpry that first. Um, 
there's actually like two like two things but don't just take the first uh, outer bezel off so you, you'll be able, you'll be able to see the clips just pry it up use a, something flat and kind of pull up on it until it unsnaps Uh, be careful there are some little on the side side of that there's some little tabs uh, connected to the LCD screen so as you can see there's still some black around the uh, TVs so when you go to pry it up don't try to pry the whole thing up just take out the outer bezel you'll be able to see it once once you look up under there um, so uh, we got that off our outer bezel is off and now we will remove our screen. So we'll just disconnect our driver boards and flip those over. Hey, what's up, dog? <laughs> and flip those over and tape them to the screen. Yeah, just flip, flip the bottom part out. There's also some little tape connected from the ground points to the chassis. Just make sure you pull that up. Or scrape it off. So yeah, that's what's another thing that's holding it down. So just take that off and just pull out the bottom. And you can see those like little black tabs on top. So just pull the bottom out first and then we'll be able to uh, slide it down and flip it over. Please do not tear those ribbon connectors. Do not crunch them. Do not bend them. When I say bend, do not like, you know, like just, just don't crunch them, okay? Just, you know, just don't pull on them because once those break, that's it. Uh, as you can see, those they have little ICs in them or circuits in them, okay? Um, I'm just going to go ahead and tape those to the screen so I do not snag them when I'm moving it. Okay, I got some suction cups here. Just gonna kind of put a little slight pressure on it, not too much, and just um, squeeze them together. You can get those off of eBay or either at the Home Depot or Lowe's. They also sell those for like removing glass. Same thing. Okay, and um, we'll just slide that out of the way. As you can see, I have the driver boards facing away from me, <laughs> so I won't walk past and snag them. Okay, uh, just lay it on a flat, clean, soft surface. not sit, sit anything on top of that screen. Uh, I actually just set the other screens on top of it because there's not that much weight, but because I'm space is limited, but uh, if possible, you know, just don't set anything on the screen at all. Okay, I'm gonna remove my outer bracket for my diffuser screens. There's actually some more uh, just clear like screens that just helps spread the light when the LEDs are lit up, spreads the light evenly. And I always mark it. I always mark the corner and I also mark this screen. Now this actually has four pieces. There's um, one on each side. And if you look up under there, you'll actually see where the, the little clips are. Just unclip it. I'm using my fingernail. You can use a small flathead or whatever prior to. And the way this is made, you have to take the uh, sides off first, I believe. Uh, because it's like a little section or something in the top and bottom piece where the sides go over. Okay, so we've got our brackets taken off. Once again, I'm going to mark the screens. They have to go on exactly the way they came out. So don't reverse them, don't switch them around. Okay, the thickest one, the thickest plastic one is always on the bottom. And they have little grooves in there so they can only go in one way. So, you know, it's pretty much self-explanatory there once you put it back together. I'll just remove 
all of the screens at the same time. Set them over to the side there, out of the way. And we do have some spacers that we need to take out. I'm also gonna mark my paper also. I just get into a habit of doing this just so it's easier for me to put back together. I don't have to, have to do less thinking, <laughs> right? Sometimes you know, these only go on one way, but I just get into a habit of doing this every time for every TV. Um, and then, uh, of course, to take those patients off, we have to use, we have to squeeze them out from the other side. Fortunately for us, uh, there is not a circuit board. <laughs> one of the spaces is not located right directly over a circuit, a, a one of those boards, so we don't have to remove any circuit boards or anything. Just they are pretty much visible. Just squeeze them out just like so. There's one located up underneath the uh, LDVS cable. We'll just squeeze that one out. And the rest of them, I think there's like five or six. All right, so we got our spacers off and have our LED white paper removed. Um, and these are our lines here. Okay, there are some test points. Um, even over the individual LED, so you can test each LED individually or just check the whole line. I usually use the two ones at the bottom, I guess. Yeah, that is actually a bad LED. Uh, as you can see, it's burnt on top. That one's still good. And you can just keep on going all the way around, the, the, keep going all the way down the line until you find the bad one. But uh, I must got have I must got ahead of myself here. I'm kind of confused. But uh, let me see what I did here. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention that these uh, LEDs are come in two parts, the strips. So you can check each half if you want, or you know check the second half. And uh, it's marked there, plus negative. That part of the strip is good, okay. Um, and to light the whole strip, which I'm trying to get to here, uh, hope, hopefully I, I showed you that, I, where I usually go, it's those two gold squares at the bottom. Pretty self-explanatory, just, you know, one is negative, one is, po one is positive, it's not marked. So that's how, you can check the, that's how you can check the entire strip. Okay, now I did find the bad LED, and as you can see, it is burnt on top. Uh, very quickly, I'm just going to remove it. Use my hot air. I say about maybe like 350, and you know, the air halfway up or whatever, and it just slide right off eventually. came right off and uh, it's actually three parts here um, uh, the two on the bottom are the negative and the one on top is positive I believe and we'll just um, scrape it off make sure that's separated make sure there's no solder short the top and the bottom out and what I'm going to do is actually scrape the positive or the top side um, just to give myself a little more room with these LEDs because these are not the original ones that came out of the TV. The ones that I'm going to put in actually.
I apologize if you can't see this, but. So all I did is scrape a little trace on the top there uh, from my positive side of my LEDs. I'm gonna put just a little flux on each side. I'm just showing you guys this just uh, for individual per individual LED replacements. I would do recommend replacing the strip. For this particular set, you'll probably just order one strip and get away with it, the whole strip, which comes in two pieces. I'm gonna put my new LED back on there. Well, not back on there, but <laughs> I'm gonna put our new LED on there. He's a standard uh, with like 2.8, 3.2 volts LEDs. And as you can see, I scraped the top because I need to slide the LED actually a little bit up or, or down, whichever way you're looking at it. Um, so just so I won't short the LED out the way it's made. Um, so anyway, um, I'll just hold it, put some solder on my soldering iron tip, and just tack it down. Actually, I need to scrape a little bit more. Yeah, I'm just gonna show you the whole process of some of the headaches that I go through. <laughs> some of the headaches that I go through with replacing these LEDs. Most of them are fairly simple. I'll get it right on the first time, but I might have to, in a lot of cases I have to pull it up and redo something. So just take your time, no hurry. I'm just scraping some more of the top off. It needs to be a little bit longer. Do not scrape it all the way to the end because that is another line on top. Just that one trace. Um, let's try this again. Okay, let's try it a different way here. <laughs> Come on, if we can get it. So I'm resorting to plan B, as you can see, putting solder on top and bottom, and then just, um, I'm gonna actually just lay the LED on top and see if I can melt, uh, melt the solder. Melt the solder first and try to place it on top. Solder is melting, see if I can get it perfect the first time. Hold it steady. Let's, let the solder dry. Okay, a little tilted, but let's make sure that I have not shorted it out. Let's make sure it does light up. Guess I'm getting situated there, trying to find something, I guess. There we go. Ah, oh, hey! First time! Wow, I'm so happy. Okay. <laughs> Alright, so we'll just get some alcohol to Q-tip and clean that flux around there. Um, 
just in case I don't show you that part. And we'll just put some glue, a drop of super glue on each drop, on each tip, on each uh, of those three tips up under the cover. Make sure that you do put that cover back on, otherwise you will see a bright white dot on the screen when it's reassembled. So um, anyway, that's pretty much self-explanatory. I need you. To, I guess I don't need to show you that with the super glue. Uh, but um, as you can see, it's dry now, and uh, just I just made sure that I centered centered the actual LED cover on top of the LED. Um, make sure it's dead center over the LED, and voila, we got action. Okay. Fortunately for us, we just had one bad LED. And uh, saved, us, saved us some money for buying the strips. Uh, I actually did buy a strip for this TV uh, on eBay. The guy was so like, uh, you know. <laughs> anyway, um, that's done. Uh, we'll put it back together. Yeah, the guy on eBay was really bogus. Uh, he had a picture of all the strips and for, tw uh, for 20 bucks. And then after I ordered it, he sent me an email saying there was only one strip. He did, I still want it. I'm like, that is so like, uh, <laughs> how you say, uh, misleading, right? Okay, uh, you know, he didn't say anything about what strip, which side it was, or, you know. And then he actually sent me the wrong strip. He sent me a half a strip. So, um, anyway, we put it back exactly like we took it apart put on our white paper make sure the paper is snug around the LEDs put in our spacers put on our diffuser screens just like we got them off like I said they do like you know there's only one way to put them on around the clips there and I always plug it in before I put the whole thing back together I always test fire it to make sure that one of the covers didn't fall off or you know there's no spots or dirt or string in between okay it looks very clean everything looks okay we'll put our brackets back on over our diffuser lenses And so we'll have to do the top and bottom first because they're like little notches in it on the end there which the side ones go over. Just snap those back on in place. Okay, we got all of our brackets on for our diffuser screens and next we'll put our screen back on. Make sure it is flush on all sides please because if you do not if there's a piece sticking up or overlapping the, the edge uh, when you put the bezel back on you are going to crack the screen very very just that easy yes so as you can see I'm looking to make sure that it is flush inside of those brackets there's nothing sticking up um, sometimes it helps if I actually remove my uh, suction cups because you can see there's a little bend in it but I'm pretty sure I got it. Okay, so we'll actually mount. It's the next step. We'll actually mount our driver boards back in. Okay, we got those mounted back in. We'll actually put on our screen. I'm sorry, our outer bezel. And as you can see, that pretty much easily snaps into place.
And we could reconnect our driver boards um, to our TCOM, put our speakers back in, connect our LDVS cable back into our main board. Put our toggle switch back in. Put our speakers back in, pretty much self-explanatory. The short wire goes to the speaker on the bottom. The long wire goes to the speaker on the other side. Plug it back into our main board. I think there's actually a little tape that you have to put, put over it, you know, just to make sure it's out of the way. Okay, uh, just double check, make sure everything's hooked up, especially your um, driver boards. And we actually we'll put our outer back cover on first. That should be quite easy. It only goes on one way, right? <laughs> okay, so, um, and uh, you, you can either put the screws in first or just put both the covers back on and just put all the screws in at the same time. Just know which screws are which. Uh, the ones on the inner cover are actually metal screws, okay? And uh, I think there is like two plastic screws around the uh, inputs and the uh, power cord. Okay, so uh, I'm going to stress this again. Make sure that you do put those exact screws back into the bottom part there, up underneath the stand. Okay, the real test, all right, smart TV, and voila, we got action. And I'm just gonna take a little precaution here just to show you guys, uh, make sure that you do have the backlight settings not blasted all the way up. And I'm gonna go over where it says, um, picture settings and then down to backlight uh, make sure that it's not jacked all the way to the end uh, because that will burn off the LEDs prematurely uh, make sure it's around halfway or just a little bit higher than halfway that should be just fine on any TV okay alright guys so hey thanks for watching make sure you give me a thumbs up if you like the video and uh, make sure that you do subscribe for more videos big dog out